Why? Sodo. What's going on, Soda Population? As always, I'm your host, Frozen Stratos, and today, yeah, we we gotta talk about this absolutely pointless release coming out of Gashapon. But before that, I want to dive into the good stuff, the really really good stuff regarding Yudo King Oger, and it's oh, it's so good. Uh, this is the blog that I feel like I, I wanted for a while, and my brain kind of turned off and forgot that. We have to wait until it's about to be released until we get this blog. But we are finally getting the blog for the Yudo figures that, like, basically gives us the, the developer notes on everything they did here. And, um, you know, basically the lowdown on what we're getting when this releases. Now, I'll, I will note that this comes out uh, at the time of this recording next week in Japan. Um, so it is on its way out soon. Uh, that would be May 15th. Uh, on a Monday in Japan and uh, yeah, it's it's very exciting. So uh, For a refresher we're getting 12 total boxes here and it makes yeah, uh, it takes two boxes per one figure each box is gonna be uh, 490 yen before tax uh, and then 539 with tax uh, Not sure how that's gonna be shaking out with uh, your retailer of choice, but that information is out there for you to compare and contrast. Um, and yeah, here are the boxes. Like I said, uh, two boxes make up a figure, and these look really good. Uh, as always, the backs of the boxes, they've gone horizontal with them. Um, this has been like this for quite a bit, but they want to do this just to make sure you get to, to see all the figures that are in the wave. Uh, anyway, let's introduce the figures. Uh, and they gave us some really awesome photos of them displayed with the mini plot that came out I believe actually I think these are already out right now So uh, if you want to display these with them, they look great. It is actually I Would say relatively in scale to the transformation. So I absolutely love that um, It gives you know the mini plot extra functionality outside of you know being the mecca for the year and yeah here are the figures just you know on their own and they look fantastic um they get a lot of good posing out of all these figures like these are uh i, I think a few of their signature poses and they strike them really really well uh so uh for all these figures they wanted to go through a few points the first point to touch on is the molding so these figures, each of them are going to be molded in, you know, their respective colors. Um, thankfully, it's a it's a pretty easy layout for them to do. Uh, and on top of that, they made sure to paint the blacks on all of the visors, except for, well, black, because, you know, it's already that color. And on top of that, uh, I believe the fronts of the uh, silver cuffs and the knee rings those are going to be silver. I can't quite make out if the backs of them are, are sticker or not. I, To me, to my eye, uh, we'll see it later, but I do think they're stickers. But this is just an image of all the figures without the stickers on them. So, um, once we get the stickers on, uh, they really only like accent the figures. So, these are the, the second tones of their extra colors, uh, and I really like it. I, I appreciate that it is sort of relegated to the this minimal area here uh, on top of that uh, dragonfly mantis and papillion uh, those three figures or those three suits actually have a different color to their mantles so in order to recreate this they painted uh, the whole cape the whole extra cape now like I said only those three rangers have it but it's painted on both sides like there is that silver trim sticker but it really really looks good um it's it's such a striking look and i love it um yeah good stuff here also speaking of molding uh there is a separate mold that i'll start referring to as like the the lighter mold uh this encompasses yellow and purple and they look pretty good it might be tough to distinguish um you know just on their own but these are two separate molds uh they wanted to make that clear uh, just to recreate the the accuracy of those molds from the show. Anyways, 
let's move on into articulation. Uh, first, we're starting off with the head. Uh, I believe in recent years, they moved to uh, double ball joint in the head. Um, or at least one of them was a ball joint. Either way, now for toy safety concerns, they've had to revert them back to um, swivels. So you have the swivel at the base of the neck uh, and then an up and down motion at the, uh, the base of the head. So it's a sacrifice, but yeah, I, you know, I, I always give Candy Toy the benefit of the doubt. They do the best they can with their resources. Like I, I have, I have zero reason to think they've done this maliciously to ooh, take away articulation. No, they pride themselves on their articulation. So if this had to happen, it had to happen. I, it sucks, but you know what? It's still movable and I think it's fine. Um, yeah, moving on. Uh, here is the shoulder, and they wanted to show off that, hey, yeah, we still have that, like, shoulder drawer joint, and, like, this has been an improvement, or at least a feature of Soto figures, uh, Yudo figures, Soto Chronicle figures, all sorts of candy toy figures, um, have made use of this drawer joint, and it, it works, it just works across the board, and I'm glad to see it continue to work here. I'm not sure what this image is about, um, they are saying here that like, oh yeah, you can make lively and delicate poses, basically saying like, you can get the subtleties in the motion with these shoulders. I just, I straight up don't know what these little constellation looking things are referring to. I assume it's for like, you know, showing you the, the areas, the points of articulation, but like, they're not lining up one to one with anything, so... I don't know, let me know in the comments down below. W what's your read on this? Uh, next up, let's move on to the shoulder armor, which is a pretty big change, because now it's attached to the uh, the chest armor rather than the shoulder itself, which honestly makes quite a difference. Uh, it means that if you move the shoulder around, the shoulder pad isn't gonna move around with it. It's, well, it is gonna move just like in the same motion as the suit would itself. And I think that's such an improvement. Um, an improvement which I think would be welcome in Soto should they decide to go this route. Now, uh, the only difference I see in implementation between Yudo and Soto is that Soto always has um, the chest swaps. So that mass that would connect to the shoulder pad uh, it's going to be sometimes, depending on the gimmick, sometimes it'll be taken off and on on that chest uh, armor area. So it might be difficult for them to implement depending on what the the next year's gimmick is going to be. But I would love to see this connection point because it is, it is way more accurate. Uh, let's see it a little bit more in motion here with blue. It looks really good. Now, this sort of motion is something that you would expect out of the older joints still, but something like this, uh, where you sort of turn the shoulder with it, um, it won't move. It'll just stay there. Like this is this is perfect. I, I think um, shoulder pads have been a difficult thing for Candy Toy in general to find a solution for. Uh, as much as I love Shoto Double Cross and Shoto O. Uh, I do think their shoulder pads need some sort of fix or need some sort of different solution that isn't just PVC plastic that holds them on like flaps. I think this is my preferred implementation of shoulder pads. I do recognize that this basically creates extra parts and only Yudo and Soto might be able to accomplish this because they are more model kit like how you have to put them together for the most part um but i feel like it's not a big ask if if this is somehow implemented in shoto so i'd love to see this implemented across the board anyway moving on um let's talk about that mantle or cloak or cape or whatever uh there's a mounting point right on that shoulder pad that we just talked about um, here it is. It juts out a little bit, but you know what? It's fine. Um, it also swivels on that axis, axis so that's very good. Uh, and on top of that, it has a secondary mounting point. Now, might seem pointless, but uh, this, this extra peg that is uh, unique to Soto allows you to change this 
very dynamic looking, um, you know, uh, cape unfurling pose into a more elegant sort of streamlined look if you use the other backpack. So I do appreciate these options. I, I think um, a lot of the articulation and the improvements this time around, what they really wanted to focus on was the subtlety, the subtlety of the motion of these figures. And I think this absolutely accomplishes that. I love, love, love the look of it. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about legs because you can now sit crisscross applesauce with your Yudo figures. Um, so this is something that I wasn't 100% privy to, uh, but it, I, as far as the blog has said, there used to be a peg on the back of the legs, like the calf area of the Yudo figures, uh, that made it kind of not super possible to, to get your figures seated in this configuration, but for this wave specifically, they were able to take it out. Um, they, for toy safety concerns, they can't promise that it'll be gone for good, but at least for this round of six figures, it's gone away and it makes the figures look way more accurate and far more articulated. And, you know, from the beginning, um, the, the writer of this blog, Marota, uh, admits that they really wanted to make this uh, this sitting pose for Black happen in Yudo. So yeah, it looks great. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about accessories. Uh, the first of which is the Oger Caliber. Um, there is a peg on the uh, back side of it. So that means you can mount it to uh, the, uh, the hip and it looks really good. It looks good holstered and um, for Papillion, at least, you know, in in their civilian form, uh, they were able to mount it on their back. And if you want Rita to do that, you absolutely can in this mode. I love it. I love the look of it. I think it's so much, her, so much, uh, so much more characterful uh, or indicative of their character. Um, it it just looks good. Anyway, speaking of this sword which was a point of contention for a while just because we didn't have enough information, was that this set does in fact have an extra sticker uh, that you can place onto the sword to make it look like it's charged up. Uh, this is not exclusive to the Gashapon thing that we talked about earlier. This is in just the regular Yudo figure. Also, gotta say, the sticker implementation here, they were able to get the, the sticker into all the grooves and crevices this is perfect. The sticker looks really great at this angle. I don't know how the application is going to go, specifically because, you know, that uh, that hilt is looking very topographical. There's there's a lot of topography to um, that sword, but otherwise, it looks really good in this shot, in this shot specifically. Anyway, that's not the only weapon we're getting because there is also the king's weapon and. It can function just like it does in the show. Um, they even admitted, Marota even admitted that like, hey, when we saw that, we, we didn't quite know if we were going to uh, recreate the gimmick. But they did it. And really, it's just a series of pegs back here. So I guess, I don't know. I, I don't claim to design toys, but I guess it doesn't seem all that bad to my eye. I'm glad they went through and made that anyway. Also, uh, what this image is demonstrating is that there is an adapter piece here uh, that plugs into the King's weapon for different types of, I guess, holding or different versions of this weapon. So you saw that it could transform before. There are multiple different modes that it um, that it goes into. Uh, so that means this adapter um, in this configuration is fitted specifically for the shield, the scythe, and the sword mode. Uh, here's this demonstration here. I, I gotta believe that that's the scythe mode, which yeah, it's generous to call that a scythe. Um, but yeah, that's whatever. Uh, and also in this configuration with that, uh, adapter piece, this is specifically for the gun, claw, and bow mode. Here it is in bow mode, and I gotta be honest. Don't quite understand the difference between gun and bow mode if all of it is a ranged weapon. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I've, I have no idea. 
functionally, I don't understand the difference. But you know what? They got an extra thing out of it. That's fine. Moving on. Uh, there is an extra adapter piece um, in all of the figures. So don't worry. It isn't just exclusive to one of them. Uh, and you can unplug the original hilt and plug in the new one uh, so that you could... Uh, use the port on the king oh uh, the king's weapon and turn it into Naginata mode looks good uh, and also that uh, that hole that's at the bottom of the king's weapon that is used to make this um, this Naginata mode possible it's also helpful in the gun mode because hey it kind of looks like a gun barrel so ooh more theater of the mind stuff if you'd like I think it's cool I think it works out Moving on, um, if you are finding it difficult to, I guess, store all these items, turns out you can get the mini plot um, role play set of the the what is it the the king's hotline the buckle uh, and just store them all in there. Uh, I believe this was used as a display base for the mini plot as well. So do with it what you want. I think it's a cool idea. But I'm not going to go out of my way to buy it. Uh, moving on, because we, we've seen the main five rangers, uh, but we have not seen the sixth figure of this set in full detail. Uh, and that is Rackalese. Rackalese? I don't know how to romanize that name. So if someone could give me an appropriate pronunciation, that'd be great. My friends kept dunking on me for calling this guy Rackalese like Hercules, but I don't know, man. I thought that was how you said it. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this is a manipulated image, by the way, a, um, a version of that Zord does not exist in those colors yet. They don't know if they're going to make it yet. We have, we have not, I mean, I assume they're going to make it, but the one that you see before you now, that is a manipulated image. It's not real. Don't believe it. They just wanted to do this for the shot, and hey, it looks good. Um, but yeah, here he is. Basically, um, he is a complete mold reuse of Red, which, you know, that's the point. That's that's how this thing works. But uh, with the gunmetal grays and all that stuff thrown in, it does have a very striking appearance as compared to Red. Uh, the mantle itself does get painted as well uh just like the other three rangers i talked about before uh this is done up in a gunmetal gray looks very good and all the gold is in there as well um presumably painted the same amount as the rest of the yudo figures but we are not done with the new molding yet uh because this is actually a brand new mold for the sword this is the Ojer Caliber Zero, and it's specifically molded for this version. Um, on top of that, he's never seen one of it, but they made sure to give him a king's weapon. Uh, and you could also have him use the king's weapon and the uh, Ojer Caliber Zero in Naginata mode. Hasn't happened in the show, but you can do it because, you know, it's just three millimeter, three millimeter pegs. It's easy. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Um, now, speaking of fun little extras that they've given us, it turns out using the available ports uh, and pegs and all that stuff with the mini plaw that came out before, you can actually plug those pieces into each ranger to recreate the opening theme where, you know, all those parts are just adorned onto their bodies. This looks great! This looks so good! And once again, just another reason to pick up uh, the mini plot. You know, it's getting increasingly more difficult to recommend uh, Candy Toy to more people. Mostly because, you know, um, the action heroes really eat the lunch of Yudo. Even though these are better toys, it's just the one that comes out first, right? But these, they're, you know, compatible uh, with the mini plot and the mini plot itself, so articulated, which, you know, the DX toy is now very much more articulated than before. But I think there are more things to be said about 
candy toy like more considerations to put onto candy toys favor um just you know be a bit more patient with your toy buying experience if you're picking and choosing between the two also these are far far cheaper anyways so 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 in love with the options they gave us here um here they all are with the mini plot that i was talking about before they look very very good but what was i so upset about before well you know just the fact that gashapon decided to co-opt some of this for some reason i i don't quite understand what's going on here if if the candy toy team needed extra funding from gashapon uh to make these figures happen or what i i don't understand what's gone down but for whatever reason premium gashapon is making these same Yudo figures available to you as well. They come out at a different time, but the blog says they're pretty much the same figures. The only difference here is that you can't get Rackalese. Rackalese. You can't get the gray gold... No, the, the, the gray silver one. Whichever one you want to call it. Um, he's not in this wave, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's at least not available. I believe it's it's constrained to just these five uh, And I do believe it. It's technically more expensive Like I said at the top each box is 450 yen each all together That's 900 yen and these are a thousand yen pay 100 extra yen To get the premium gash upon bird. I don't I Don't get it. I don't understand what the point of making these available here is now i have noticed a lot more people are finding it difficult to obtain the yudo figures perhaps this will add more into the uh in to the yudo circulation hopefully but i if you can if you're in japan and you can go out to your local um you know supermarket or whatever and just pick up the Yudo figures, why would you go online and roll the dice to see if you can get one of these? Like, I I don't get it. If someone could shed some light on this, I would love to know more. I just don't see the point of it. Hopefully, I part of me is hoping that if Premium Gashapon is involved and there are all of these constraints coming down, on candy toy recently like hopefully they can divert some of gashapon's resources and budget into making yudo figures as well so it's like a joint venture you can have them uh you can purchase these either as gashapon or as uh candy toy figures but they will functionally be the same toys and hopefully together they have a budget enough to give us like a wave two of these figures or something i don't know i have no idea Everything's up in the air now because Candy Toy is in such a precarious spot right now. So, I don't know, man. Uh, that's that's pretty much all I have for you for Yudo. It looked it looks good. Like, Yudo looks good right now. I really hope we'll see a Yudo 2 for uh, King Oger. We've had Yudo 2s in the past, but like with with Soto and all the other candy toys pushing things to premium, I could easily see us either getting a premium set, which would suck, or maybe not getting them at all. I don't know. I have no idea what's on the table. So I I hope that there is a bright future for Yudo ahead, um, especially just with the love and effort put into all these figures. Anyways, that is it for me. If you want to see more about the love and effort being put into figures, uh, you should check out that's not the right video I wanted to pimp out but it's this video right here all about the Forze figures these were excellent excellent premium Bandai releases um, you know among the sea of premium Bandai items but you know what these look great so definitely check this video out if you haven't already thank you so much for watching keep it juicy